Okay. I think I'm live. Okay. It seems, let me double check. Okay. It seems I'm live. So anyone watching this uh, live, thanks for tuning in. Um, go ahead, just post messages or comments in the chat and I'll try to get back to those at the end. Uh, but first we'll just kind of go over the topic, um, quickly that way anyone watching the recording can get value out of it without having to deal with any sort of, uh, comments as I go along. Um, so what we're going to be covering is first turning off my audio. Uh, what we're going to be covering is basically we've got this flat list of data and right now it just displays the data. If I type in to anything in the search, um, it doesn't do anything. So that's what we'll be actually setting up. Before we dive in, let's just walk through uh, the application that we're starting with. So as you can see, we're just rendering a bunch of data. And this data is coming from a local API, uh, but I, or rather a local file, but I wanted to set it up in a way where it's like uh, we're making a fetch against a remote API, just so we can kind of get familiar with how we would interact with that. For example, if we were passing the search query uh, to a server. So what we're doing at this point is we've got some basic state. We're checking, uh, are we loading and loading is going to be true when we're making that initial request. We've got our data, which is an array of all the people that we're going to be rendering. And finally, we're also storing an error uh, just in case any sort of errors do occur. Uh, when the component mounts, we're going to make our remote request or make our local request. And when we do that, we're going to set our loading state to true. We'll make a request to get our users and then we will update our state to uh, capture that loading is false and then to also store our users in state. Um, render separator does exactly what it says. Render header is basically where we're rendering this search bar. So it's going to stick to the top of the list and not actually scroll with it. And we don't have to do any sort of other hacks to get it to show. Our footer is just going to be a little loading indicator. Um, and then within the actual render method, we've got a safe area view because I'm demoing on an iPhone 10. And inside of here, we've got a list, a flat list with all of the data that we're actually rendering. So that's that. Um, other thing I'm going to quickly show you just because we'll touch on this just a very, very small amount as we go. Uh, but I've got an array of users. Um, and they're cutting the grass just outside my window. So apologize if there's that background noise, um, but hopefully it won't be too loud. But anyways, we've got an array of users. I think there's 200 users here um, and we're only displaying 20 users. That's all our API is returning by default. Um, and then our actual API, we've got a function that's basically just going to return 20 users or whatever our limit is and our API, our get users, we can pass both a limit, which has a default value of 20, and a search query. And the search query is going to check on the user's first name, last name, and then their email address. So that's kind of uh, the way we're going to be sorting it. So we're checking the first name, the last name, as well as the email on a user. And all users have the same data format. Okay, um, so with all that set up, let's go ahead and start setting up search. And whenever I'm doing any sort of search, uh, I like to try to do it locally first. So we already have these 20 users on our device. How can we go ahead and actually start searching this and filtering it uh, on the user device? So let's go ahead and start setting this up. Uh, to do this, we're gonna add two pieces of data to our default component state. First off, we're going to have our query, which by default will just be an empty string. And then we're also going to have another array of data which we're going to call full data. And the reason I'm doing this is data is going to be whatever's being displayed on the user's list. And full data is going to be whatever has been returned from the server. So initially we're going to uh, search our local collection of information and update data on that. But full data is going to continue to keep all of the information that way if they get rid of their search uh, we still have data to show them beyond just what they initially searched for. So hopefully as we go, that makes a touch more sense. Okay, so we can start diving into this. Um, first thing we need to do, and this applies to our header, uh, we need to actually detect when this text is changing and update the state 
when that happens. So I'm going to create a new function on this component and I'm going to call this, uh, what am I gonna call this? Let's call this handle search, okay? And basically this is going to take one function or one argument to the function, which is just whatever the user has searched. Um, so in here, basically what's going to happen is we will update the query value with whatever this new text is. And then to actually use this, we can go down to our search bar and I'm just using React Native Elements to make this all easier. But we can say on change text. is going to equal this dot handle search. Okay, so I'll save this and then going back up here, uh, let's just log this out just to make sure we're actually getting the response we expect. And okay, we are seeing the text updating as we go. So that is all good to go. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is actually filtering this information. Remember, we just want to do uh, the local information first before we go and actually make remote requests. So how do we want to do this? Well, there's two things we're going to import first. Uh, first off, we will import uh, underscore from Lodash. And I'm just using Lodash because it makes working with data a lot easier. It's a utility library I bring in basically every time uh, I work with something. And something else I want to do is just my little search function that we set up in the API. So this contains function. I'm just going to make sure I export this. Uh, but basically contains is just going to take the way the user data is formatted and then check if the first name, last name, or email includes our search query. Very, very basic search, um, but it works well enough for what we're doing here. So I'll import contains from here, uh, from API slash index. And then also, if you've got any questions, go ahead and just ask those, and I'll come back to them once we wrap things up. Okay, so with our handle search, uh, what we can do at this point is first, we're going to format our query. Um, if you look, and because we're doing very basic search, we're not using regex at all, uh, everything's lowercase. So what I want to do first is just uh, take the text and turn that to lowercase. So we can just say text dot to lowercase. All right. And that just makes sure even if they do, you know, capital W, we're going to search th things in the same way. Okay. Next thing we want to do is remember we want to update our data where we've got all of our full data. Um, and then we want to update just the data when we're searching it. So that actually reminds me uh, once we get our users back, not only are we going to put the state on the data, we're also going to copy it into our full data. Um, so there's, by default, they're both going to be the entire user's array. Uh, and then going on, so we can say our new data is going to be underscore dot filter, this dot state dot full data. And then basically now we need to do that little uh, comparison operation. So this is where that contains function we imported comes in. So we'll say uh, returns contains user and then whatever our formatted query is. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll make sure the query is the formatted query. And then data is just going to be our new data array. And filter is going to basically take this and our actual filtering logic and then return a new array which we can go and copy onto data. Okay, so we made one request to our API to get the data and then we can try to search. And you can see we're doing completely local search. All right, so of the 20 or so people we've got in here, we're just searching this short list uh, so that we actually get some sort of response. And the reason I like to do local search first is just, you know, regardless of their internet connection, uh, how fast your server is, how much data you're searching, we're giving them a filtered list of data that's already on their device so that there's something valuable to them right off the bat without having to wait on an API request. Uh, now, 20 of 200 users isn't going to be representative of the entire user database. So we want to actually make that remote request as well just to make sure that uh, we're actually you know, showing the user all the potential options that they can get. 
So we can go ahead and start doing that uh, next. And to do this, uh, what we'll do is actually in the make remote request, um, when we make this remote request, we're actually going to allow it to basically pass arguments to this get users function. And just as a reminder, it takes a limit. We're going to have a limit of 20 users. And then we're also going to pass the uh, query variables that we're, we want to use. So that's going to be available at this.state.query. So at this point, basically everything is set up already because our API or get users is already set up. Um, we don't need to do anything uh, beyond that except make this call when we do a handle search. So uh, basically the way I like to do this is this.setState takes a callback function as a, a second argument because setState is async. Uh, basically this callback function will be called once uh, state has been updated. And the reason I'm doing this is because we rely on the latest state inside of make remote request. So I want to make sure it's been updated with our query value uh, before we go and make this new request. So once that's done, we can go ahead and say this.make remote request, save it. And then uh, what we can do here, I'm actually going to go to the API and we will say uh, API called, all right? Just so we can track. We'll also put the query in there just so we can see how many times it's being called as we're going. Okay, so our API is called. It's not being passed a query uh, at that point. So let's go ahead and search. And you can see we get Will. Uh, we also searched JA, which by default only had two results. Now it's got you know 20 results or something close to that. And we can go ahead and search the entire user base or user database. Um, so that works well. We basically got search. We've both got local search so we can get some instant results or near instant results. And we've also got remote search where we're hitting an API uh, to get that information back. Now. We're not quite done. Uh, well, we are done, this can be done. But one suggestion I would make is to not constantly make requests to uh, your API, especially if it's some remote server. You can kind of wait for that. Uh, basically wait for the user's input to slow down a little bit or to stop so we can know exactly what the user's searching for. Uh, because for example, with uh, let's say Pinja, they probably don't care about just the P, right? A lot of people will probably have a P in there, but we're interested as it gets more and more specific. So what we can do to just kind of narrow or limit the number of uh, requests we're making to the API is to use a debounce function, which again, Lodash is bringing to us and just makes it very nice to work with. So what I'm going to do is say underscore dot debounce and then basically wrap my entire remote request with this. Um, so the first thing debounce is going to do is take the function that we actually want to call. So what we previously had is make remote request. And then it's also going to take a debounce uh, time. So basically it's not going to be called more than every 250 milliseconds, or I think it's going to wait 250 milliseconds uh, before actually making a request since the last time it was called. So if I put this in here, save it and then we look at the Chrome console again and I make requests now. Now I'll search for Pinja and you can see we only make one API request and that's going to be nice just because it's less results, uh, less state updating and you know it's just it's going to be a qu bit quicker, more relevant results because we're not getting a result for P, I, and we're just getting the one result that we actually care about. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything. Setting up search is pretty straightforward. Um, we've got this data that we're updating with our search results. Uh, we're storing our query, which we then use to go and pass to our API. Um, and that's pretty much it, how we can set up search within a flat list in React Native. So I'll stay on here for like two more minutes waiting for any questions. If you have a question and you're on the live stream, go ahead and put that in here now. 
otherwise uh if you're watching this afterwards i hope this was valuable if you've got any questions uh, please leave a comment below and if you're interested in more react native stuff be sure to check out uh, the handlebar labs youtube channel just to see it and unfortunately i just realized i left my face up on the screen so the bottom half of the screen was covered but hopefully uh, everything was still easy enough to see as we were going through and demoing the application. Okay. All right, everyone, I think I'm going to hop off here and uh, yeah, hopefully this was valuable, useful to you, and you can now add search to your React Native app that's using a flat list. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you on the next live stream or the next video.